So we're actually going to get rid of this add score function. Sorry for that. Um, and we're going to incorporate it into our update UI function. So what we're going to do is we do need to keep just going to throw this code in here for now. It's going to do more than we're going to take this what our add score was doing is updating just the score. We're going to take that out because we're going to put it all into this update function. What we need to do is make sure that score goes up every time we get that collision. So we're going to put that right here, right after our sound effect plays. Score plus 10 and tell it to update the UI when we've had that collision, when we've hit the ship. We got to make sure. To, again, anytime we're, uh, I, anytime this happens, we need to update the UI, just like we did here, where the enemy moved off the screen. That's that's telling. We got to tell it to match the screen once again. So now we've done that. We want to have all of our text boxes be accounted for here, not just our score box. So lives box text equals string. We're converting that integer into a string. So that's why we need to say that string. We're, we're casting it that way. Lives box and also the levels box we have. That's going to display the current level, which we'll deal with later. So we just want to prep that. And we also need to make a a way to reset this. And I just want to Sorry, reference, uh, where's my update UI function? There it is. So we also want to reset this. I'm just going to copy this right now so I don't forget to do it later. Before we update anything, we need to create a variable to allow us to reset the UI to its base state when there's a game over or when you go to a new level. So. I'm creating a variable called reset UI and it's going to be a boolean a boolean so that's going to trigger when you have a game over it's going to trigger in the cleanup basically the cleanup the big cleanup function that we're going to be writing so what this there's going to be a boolean which means a true or false so we're going to say if this reset command is set to true, which it'll start as false, we're going to set it to true when the level is failed or beaten. So when it's true, put score back to zero and put lives back to three and make sure to reset this boolean variable to false so it doesn't keep triggering and keep resetting itself, right? So let's create that UI variable before we forget. I'm going to put that here. Reset UI. It's what type is it? It's a Boolean, which means true or false. And we're going to set it to false first because we don't want it to start. That's true. So there we go. We have our update UI function, and I believe that's done. So it, it's going to. Well, if it has to reset, it'll reset, but if not, it's going to be called whenever there's a collision or when the enemy hits the left of the screen, it's going to update these boxes to display the current score lives or current level when we change levels. Um, so that's that. So now we need, to, we need to get our cleanup function going. So as I believe it's actually, all oh right, we've got got a couple errors because um, I changed the name add score we don't need that number one we don't need that uh, property score score is supposed to be lowercase sorry levels box I think it's called level box let's just make sure 
probably a typo by me. Level box. Level box. Not levels box. And there's our errors. So now let me put in that code. First of all, notice, okay, I gotta update the UI in the beginning, which I forgot. But you'll notice that it updated. And now, and watch, as the enemies hit the screen, there we go. So that worked. This won't work yet because we haven't told it where to go. There's no, there's no code in our functions once we go there. But notice how it worked. The enemies reached the left side of the screen. The UI was updated to display the new lives. And when it hit zero, in our, um, our check lives function, if lives gets to zero, go to the game over screen. And that's what happened. So most importantly, we need to clean things up, and it, that kind of connects everything together. So I'm gonna let's let's deal with this uh, this larger, a little more complicated function, but nothing really that new from what we've been doing actually. So I'm just gonna copy that name, and we need to do is you know what I think I'm just gonna go through this function in the effort of saving time. I'm going to copy the, the function that I wrote. Um, it's kind of a big function. Get rid of the space. So, what this is, and I believe we've already dealt with this anyway when we remove, we remove um, our objects from the screen, it's the same concept. You're doing a, a loop. You're looping through the array, but you're looping through it backwards since you're removing things. You want to loop. You want to loop backwards when you're removing from an array, as I've said before. So here, here's what this function does. It looks worse than it is. It's basically a big reset button, and because we're going to be once we put our start screen in as well, which we're, we're going to do probably next would make sense after this, is it just kind of resets things. It removes everything. It cleans up everything. Every visual element, the timer that adds the enemies. So let's go through it line by line. We, have, we just have a couple of trace statements in here that I put in so you could see what's happening. You remember trace statements are entirely optional. It's for debugging. I like to use them a lot. So these are just to let let us know, okay, what's what's before this function runs, how many bullets are there and how many enemies are there? And then at the end of it, how many bullets are there and how many enemies? It's a way of checking to make sure it works. You can remove it once you know it works. So first thing we do, we're kind of removing the elements of the game stage remove the main loop remember this cleanup function is being it's being run when we either run out of lives or we beat the level by getting a hundred score so we don't need anything to be running because the, the level's over so we're removing the main loop which does everything we're doing that first you want to do that first that's also the most processor intensive you want to remove it then we're removing the keyboard listener that, that listens for our buttons, our arrows and to fire. Then we're stopping the timer that adds enemies to this off the screen. Remember that? It adds them at every set interval. We're stopping it. And then we're removing the listener that listens for that timer and calls the add enemy function. So that that's kind of everything. That's the, that's the engine of the game. <laughs> the engine of the game is the loop the keyboard listener and the timer. That's this right here is our engine, you could say. And that we just turned the engine off. We turned that baby off. So after this, all I'm doing is removing this is just to keep things neat and to not build up um, memory, which is a great over time will will really kill your performance. I'm just removing the player, the rifle, 
and we're and we're setting the reset UI boolean variable that we just created a few minutes ago. We're setting it back to true because when the next time we call that update UI function, we want it to run and actually reset the variables. So it also has to reset the current level back to one. Oh, right now that's that's done elsewhere. So anyway, that's what this does. And here we just very similar to what we're doing in our check collisions function. You can go look up at that. We're just looping. All I'm trying to do is say that anything that's left on the screen, let's let's find out what's left and let's get rid of it. So we're just first dealing with the bullets. We're looping through the bullets away array backwards and anything we find, we're removing it. Same thing with the enemies. Looping through it backwards. Anything we find, remove. I have this stop command in here in case that ship explode animation is playing. We want to stop it from animating. That's using up processing power once again. Stop it from animating. And we've already removed it from the screen. Then we're nulling the variable and we're splicing it out of the ray. And those things make the garbage collector. You can look up the garbage collector. You may hate or love, depending on your project. Once you do those things, you're enabling it to be garbage collected and to, to reduce the, the memory and processing power of needed for your app to run, which is very important on mobile devices and tablets. So anyway, again, it's like the same code we're using in our, our removing uh, in, the, in the detections function. And that's it. So I hope that made sense. Shut the engine down. Remove the player from the screen. Cue the UI to be reset once the update UI function runs, which it will whenever a level started. And then just actually do the cleanup here. The cleanup of the bullets and the enemies. That's all our game has. If you had other objects like power-ups, other, you know, other moving objects on the screen, some sort of moving background, you know, you'd want to clean it up. You clean up all the visuals so you can start fresh when that level's loaded and your memory of your app stays low. This is very important. So, let's check out where we're at with this. I'm sure I'm missing something, but uh, I've got to tell the UI to you know what, I'm going to do that first, because I want that to be right. The UI has to be set when the level is loaded. So we want to call update UI, which we're not doing. Start game, player, after everything started, let's, you're not going to see this split second of time here before it's update. Let's update the UI once the game started. There we go. Our lives is detected, as is our our current um, level. I'm going to let the enemies reach the left side of the screen. You can see lives is going down. Game over. There we go. This doesn't do anything yet. So that's that. That's all started. There is one thing I need to... Once the level starts, I need to... Uh, set the focus back to the keyboard. Which I will deal with. In a second. So... We got, our, we got that set up. Before we get to the what happens when you beat the level, I would like to add the start screen in so we can kind of have the full structure getting more complete. So we're actually going to <clears throat> move, we're gonna, we're gonna want the start screen to come up first. So I want to 
make sure we, we do this first in our loading. So again, I'm going to take this. We're going to be creating a new function as well for what happens when the start button is clicked to make the button actually work. So we're going to be, we're going to be taking out our call to start the game, which now was happening upon loading the document class. This is the, um, I forget what the name is now, I'm blanking, the uh, initialization. It's the, the function, the constructor function. There we go. It's the function that is the same name as the class. It's the one that runs immediately upon starting. So we're not going to call the start game because we don't want to start the game yet. We want to go to our loading screen. So what is this code? It's just like the game over screen I showed you before. Position it, add it to the screen, set it to the current screen. So the current screen is now our start screen, which is this. This here. The greatest space shooter ever made. Ever. We put that there. And we now that we've 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 put added to the screen, we make it the current screen. And this information is to to activate the button. And I'm and I'm because this is our function that runs our constructor function, I'm doing it for all four screens we're going to need. Instead of, you know, scatterbraining it and putting it all over the place. I think it's better to put your listeners up front instead of, you know, scatter. So, so what we're saying here, let's first ignore these three and just, it's all the same code, just with different screens. Start screen dot start button add event listener mouse event click start button clicked is the function. So what is this here? <clears throat> What is this? Start screen, start button. What is that referring to? Well, again, that goes back to the button that's inside of the start screen. So if I click into this, if you're remembering from the beginning of the tutorial, we unlock the layers, I click the start button. It's the same button where we put it into all four screens. Its instance name is start button. The name of this object that it's held in the screen is start screen. So you just use this dot syntax to go within a movie clip. You go from movie clip down to its child. If the start button had another child, if it were a movie clip, you could have another nested element and you keep adding these the dot syntax. So we're just adding the, the click listeners to that button in each of the four screens. We're doing it right up front. So what we need to do now is add this function that what is what happens when the start button is clicked and basically it starts the game so again I'm just gonna copy this uh, but I am going to explain it just trying to speed this up this tutorial is going a lot longer than I thought so this again whenever our start button is clicked no matter what screen we're on we go to this function and because it always has to do the same thing it starts the game no matter where you are so start button clicked it's a mouse event it's triggered by a mouse event that's so that's what it's expecting an event of type mouse event I'm setting the stage focus to stage um, you'll actually when you when the focus is on a button if I tried to use the arrow keys they wouldn't they wouldn't work until I click the screen so I'm just resetting the focus to the stage which allows the, the keyboard keys to work you can look up stage focus it's not that big of a deal we're setting the stage focus to stage we're removing the current screen whatever that may be and that's why we use the current screen variable because it, it could it could represent all four of the screens we're removing the current screen and then we're starting the game which this this function is you know, virtually untouched, as you remember, I just added the update UI call earlier. So we're not starting the game right away. We want to go to the start screen, right? It's like in a real game. And that's what we have. Here's your start screen. Simple as it gets. If you remember before, I said about adding that uh, overstate to the button. As you can see, it's getting larger and it turns blue. 
So we click it, and we're into the game. <coughs> Sound is working. Everything's animating. Our, our UI is updating. <coughs> get the idea. I won't, I won't go to the game over screen again because you know that that works. So more of our structures there. Our structure is almost complete. We just have to deal with the neck, the wind screens, the two ones. Next level and, and you beat the game. So <clears throat> let's get those going. It's, it's the same concept. I'm actually just going to copy the code and adjust the name. So we have a next next level screen, which I think is called next screen. Our wind screen is wind screen. So next screen and wind screen. Just gonna copy that. Same code, applying it to a different screen. And this one is windscreen. There are ways to minimize the repetition of code as well. I know I'm, I sometimes get in the habit of, uh, but I, I, do, I do no way around it. It's just, you, you can look up ways to, that's more of the multi-class development we're gonna get to. You can have less repetition of code by using classes for specific things. So anyway, now we have our functions to go to all of our screens. So we can see that the structure is more established. Um, and all we're going to need to do now, we just need to make sure our button has our listener. So We're actually getting towards the end. So let's try to beat the level. We've already seen that we can lose the level and get to the game over screen. Let me lower the sound there. There we go, and I'm actually clicking the keyboard keys right now, and no sound or anything is happening. So we, we, we shut down our sound, which is important. So, good job. Click the button to go to level two. This is our next level screen, which you see the function right here. Which again, is in our main loop. I'm just kind of, kind of, I know people like when I Maybe some people hate me for this, but I repeat, you can always fast forward. You can't spread my words out. So the main loop, which is call, which again is started. Let's just go through it all real quick. The start game function starts our main loop. In our main loop, it's the end, the whole engine basically. We move the bullets, we move the enemies, we check for collisions, we check the lives, and we check the score. So what's happening there is obviously this last one here, check score. As the score is getting updated towards 100, we're checking it, and if it gets to 2 or higher than 100, we clean up, as is always important. And then we see if the current level is 1, we go to this screen. Good job click to go to level two. If we were already on level two, it would go to our wind screen, which we're going to see. Ah, so what I didn't introduce you to, that's the last piece of this, is the actual level two code that puts the green monsters into the game and changes their behavior to this cracked out uh, shaking that you're going to see. You're going to love this. So right now, that's not going to work. It's going to be the same gameplay. And the level didn't change, as you know. It didn't update. So that's the last big piece. And then we're done. We need to actually create the level 2 itself. 
meaning the different enemies. So we have our, our two, just to get back to that, we have our enemy, our red enemy, and our green enemy, who's going to behave differently, a little more crazily. So what we want to do is, first of all, before we start um, creating his weird movement, we want to make sure the green one is loaded in if we're on level two. So where would that be in our add enemy function? So what we want to say is, I'm actually going to copy this again. There's a quick, there's a way to that takes longer to make it so there's less repetition. But for now, that's not as important as you understanding the way a game is built at its base level. So if current level equals one, we do this, we're loading that monster. Sorry, I put this on properties. I want to keep this here. You want to see that it's either enemy, the enemy class or the enemy two class, which is what we're going to be dealing with now. So if the current level is one, we keep our same old red enemy. If else, meaning if it's anything other than one, if you had many levels, you would say else if current level two, else if current level three, etc. We only have two levels. So I'm just going to copy this. But instead of, we're going to be adding monster two of class enemy two, the green one. I'm just going to change this code to this new variable, this new instance of the green monster we're creating. Instead of, it, it'll recognize that we're on level 2, I want to create monster 2, the name, which is an instance of the enemy 2 class in our library. And again, I'm just changing the variable name here to match our new variable name. You can't have the same variable name in the same function, by the way. If I just left this as monster, and made it even though I made a different class, there'd be an error. Uh, I won't show you, but just trust me on that. You can't have the same variable name in the same function or in the same level of the class. I could not also at the top have two the same variables. So only in different functions if they're local to that function. So all this has changed to monster two. And actually I just want to check my cheat sheet again. and make sure I, um, I j this is a trial and error thing. So it's not something that math random, these are just values that I, upon doing the, rehearsing the tutorial, I found work. So, all we're doing, again, this is a, f a common formula for getting a random number between two values. It's a great, I use this code all the time. You take your high value and your low value. 30 is my minimum. So again, remember before, we wanted our mon I was spawning the monsters between a Y value of 570 at the absolute highest, which is at the bottom of the screen, and 30 at the absolute lowest, which is at the top of the screen. You don't want them to be like at zero because then you, for instance, you would just see like half of the, the graphic and it would look weird. So the highest value you want and the lowest value you want is a great way to get a random number between those. So I'm just scrunching this down and you'll see why because they're moving uh, oddly. So that's that part of it. That's just setting the starting position of the green monsters. We haven't given them their different behavior yet. And that's going to be in the move enemies function. So it's the same type of thing as that we just did. We're going to have to just put in an if statement to check what the current level is. So I'm just going to copy this section of the function. And again, I will explain it in detail to your like or to your dismay. Instead of this one simple line that was just that's, that's our level one behavior. Just move them to the left. I mean, that's going to be included in this. I'm just copying over it. So this is our new code. Everything under this is, is untouched.
So, so what does it do? Very, very simple, really. If it just adds an overall if statement. If the current level is 1, which I think we haven't changed yet, we're going to have to make sure to put that change in. If the current level is 1, keep the same behavior of the enemy, the red enemy. He just moves in a straight line to the left, minus the x coordinate of the character. Else, if we're on level 2, we're still going to have him move to the left in the x value, but we're going to make him swerve up and down. So we added a second line. This first line's the same. This is the really the, the new behavior. This is, this is new enemy AI in one line. It really can be that simple. If you want to get smarter AI, it can be very complicated. But you can do really simple things sometimes, especially with Boolean uh, variables, which I'll probably show you in the next story. So enemies EY, so all we're doing is we're saying, remember this is run every frame, we're moving the enemies, so we're taking the Y position, and we're saying, set the Y position equal to the current Y, which is reading, it's not, we're not giving it information, it's reading the current Y, so it's saying, set the new Y to the current Y, which I have highlighted, plus a random value either 18 pixels up or down. So that's the range. So that means in one frame, this character can move as much as 18 pixels up or 18 pixels down. Usually, you know, it's going to fall in a smaller amount because those are the extremes. I've played around with this. It's still a little wonky, but, you know, you, you they can go off screen once in a while. Um... But you, you're going to get the idea. It may not be the most fair level 2 for the player, but you're going to get the idea that this is, this is a new enemy behavior. And in one line. So, but before I do that, I just have to make sure I don't forget to set my current level to 2 <clears throat> when the levels beat, or otherwise the, it won't actually load this new behavior. So we're checking the score... And in our check score, if the current level, if the player gets one, remember, that's the outer if statement, in which the inner one is contained in, so this will never run if the outer one does not run. Always remember. I'm going to put a line space there for clarity. And uh, so if the current level, if you've reached 100 or more, if the current level is one, as you know, we go to the next screen. But you know what, before we go to the next screen, we can do it before or after, doesn't matter, but we got to make sure the current level is now equal to 2. And we also got to make sure when the game is reset that we set the current level back to 1, or there will be glitches. Just trust me on that. So if lives equal, so now remember, this is dealing with the game over. If, you, if your lives equal 0, we clean up and we set the current level back to 1. So that way when that start button is clicked, it doesn't put you back in level 2 where you don't belong. You, you belong back to 1. We're not going to be nice to our player and allow them to continue from where they left off. We are going to be douchebags. So, we are very nearly done. Let's just check everything out. So we start the game, our start button is interacting, we click it, we are in level 1 as you can see, we have 3 lives and our score is 0, meaning our UI is correct. My system's running a little slow, again you can use the, the debug player, it'll run better, which is the shift, um, shift uh, command return instead of just command return. Okay, so I got a 100 score. It's saying, good job. Click the button to go to level 2. This will be your, this could be your, your screen where you tell the player what score they got and how well they did and they got medals and, you know, a new high score. And then you would have your, your next button or your right arrow or something like that that says, go to the next level. 
There we go. We got our green enemies. And what the hell are they doing? They're doing exactly what they're supposed to. Just flail around like psychotic ships. So, who's driving this thing? So, I've been practicing this, so I'm pretty good at getting these guys. I beat the level. You win. And now, I'm going to show you what happens with the game over as well, but now, I just beat the game. So I start, and oh, you know what? I'm still on level two. So I got it. I did not. I did not make it start over. I dealt with the game over. We also have to set the level back to one if the game is beat. Just again, these are like those little things that you'll forget. You always want to reset the current level back to one. Whether you, whether you get a game over or whether you beat the game and hit that start button. So I'm not going to show you that again, but let's just, I'll get to level 2. Since we haven't done the game over in level 2, I'll just show you that that works. And I can't think of uh, what else is left to do for now. I think that's it. All our sounds working. Okay, I beat level 1. Now I'm in level two and I'm gonna lose on purpose here. Let's just to show you how the AI works. I think that shot's lined up. Oh look, it's not. Is that shot lined up? Nope. It's randomly assigning a new Y position. So that's why you're seeing it. it's happening every frame. You could do it less often and it might be smoother. So anyway, I died. The enemies reached the edge of the screen. Game over. We don't want it to load back level 2 again, we want it to load level 1. That's what it did. We're back in level 1. And everything is reset. The, it's displaying level 1, our lives is back at 3, as our reset UI boolean variable is doing. And the game is, is done. So I'm not going to let this tutorial... Do you see that shot? Did anyone see that shot? Three in a row, instantly. We're done, and I, game over, there you go, reset again, level one. So, this is the game, this is it, and you can build on this in any way you want. Thank you for putting up with this long tutorial, um, please support Big Toe Interactive, I think we're going to create a donut, donate button soon, which will, even if I get a very small amount of money, it'll just encourage me and enable me to spend more time at this um, and you know only do that if you think it's worth it if you think this tutorial these tutorials are worth a dollar you know and you're willing to give a dollar I really appreciate it because uh, I do as I always say I do enjoy doing this it just gets hard to um, to find the time sometimes to to create this actually took me six hours probably to do this whole put this whole thing together just to give you an idea so Anyway, uh, thanks again. I'll be, I'm going to have a new tutorial in less time than the gap between these. Hopefully a few weeks um, to a month max. And uh, I'm going to try to pick smaller topics for now. Thank you.